in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, welcome to our Benefice Eucharist on this second Sunday of Trinity. And we are here today at Farnham Distant in All Saints Church. And as I said in the previous weeks, uh, until we can gather again, I will be making my way around the Benefice to each of the parish churches to celebrate the Eucharist there and bring our service uh, from each of those churches to you. And we begin this morning with our words of preparation as we say sorry to God. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all of these paths, and grant that we may serve you in the unity of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in your goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ of the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing but worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour upon into our hearts that most excellent gift love, the true bond of peace of all virtues without which whoever lives with is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now hear our reading. The lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 to 21. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which he had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child, and sent her away. 
And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bowshot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. These are the words of the Lord. This lesson is taken from Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 to 13. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Every one mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, Violence and spoil. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart, as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying, Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one, therefore my persecutor shall stumble. And they shall not prevail, they shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper, their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous and seest the reins of the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for until thee I have opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. These are the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instructions. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. Is it enough for a disciple to be like the teacher and a slave like the master? If they are to be called the master of the house of Bezabel, how much more will they lend those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up or will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will become known, not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who will kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body together in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more valued than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge them before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A 
and one disposed in London of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, in our Gospel reading there this morning, there's a, a lot there. It's packed with lots of uh, information, lots of wisdom, lots of advice, and commandments as well. And from that also, it's reminding us of our own worth, our worth to God. Have you heard, God knows even when a sparrow, a tiny sparrow falls from a tree, and God cares for that tiny sparrow very much. So it reminds us, from God, God's reminding us of how much more of a value we are to him. And he's telling us not to be afraid. But it's human nature, isn't it? We are often afraid. But Jesus is telling us, try not to be afraid and to hand over yourself to him, to put your trust in him. He reminds us constantly how much he loves and cares for us. So much so, as we heard, even the hairs on our head are numbered and they are known by him. We are loved that much and valued that much by God. Shouldn't we then acknowledge this love and worth that we have from God to him? We acknowledge people in our own lives, don't we, daily, those around us, we offer thanks. We do this in many different ways to family members and friends for many different reasons. I'm sure you can think of many yourselves. If we receive a good deed from someone, we acknowledge that good deed, don't we? From a, a present, a card, a phone call, we acknowledge it. When we're given gifts and treats ourselves, we say thanks, we acknowledge it. But Jesus says, doesn't he, we've heard, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge, acknowledge them, my Father in heaven. God wants us to acknowledge him. Jesus wants us to acknowledge him. God already knows we acknowledge him, I'm sure, in our hearts and our, our minds. But he wants us to acknowledge him in a different way. He also wants us to affirm this acknowledgement with our mouth and with our actions. Have we done this today? Have we done it this week or recently? I heard a saying some years ago, and I think it comes from my childhood at junior church many years ago. There was a phrase there that was, stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. So I often reflect on that, and I'm reflecting it again today as I say to you, do we stand up for Jesus enough? Do we tell others of the good news? Well, we know the account of Jesus um, before he was crucified. He was stood there up in front of the crowds with Pontius Pilate. And the crowds were condemning him, wanting him to be crucified. Now, I'm sure that day there were many in that crowd that had perhaps been healed by Jesus. And there were many in that crowd that had been touched, their lives touched by Jesus, as Jesus still touch, touches lives today. 
They didn't want him. They didn't stand up for him. So we today are not commanded, as we've heard in our scripture and our gospel reading, to proclaim from the rooftops what Jesus has whispered in our ears. Jesus asks us to love him back. By showing me love, we should tell others of the good news that he brings. As we've heard in the last part of our gospel reading there, we are instructed to take up our own cross and follow him. And that's by sacrifice. And that's by coming out of our comfort zones. By being his, his ears, his, his hands, his feet upon this earth, this world, serving others in his name. If we look back through the centuries, Many people have laid down their lives for proclaiming their faith. Their faith in Jesus, our salvation. And we all are as they were, assured and promised by Jesus. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life, for my sake, Jesus says, will find it. We are not lost. We have a shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so we now declare our faith together in the word of our sin creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten is not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world and thank God for his goodness. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We thank you. We thank you for all the blessings of this life, and especially that you will hear us wherever we are, and we thank you for the technology that helps us worship together. Lord, we pray for the leaders as they work to reopen our churches. For our bishops, Martin and Mike. May they be alert to the needs of those they serve and understand their doubts and their hopes. We pray for all your church and especially for the church in this place. We pray for Chris and his family. May those who confess your name be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your son came into a world of tension and conflict and suffering and taught us about peace. 
We bring before you the pain and the brokenness of the world and we pray for peace. We pray for all those that suffer, all those that suffer through acts of terrorism and sectarian violence and hatred and discrimination and man's inhumanity to man. And in compassion, we ask you to be with all grieving families, the injured, the suffering, and the frightened people of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And grant us hearts to remember those that live in difficult circumstances. Father, we pray for all those that will be hungry today. And we ask that you sustain and help them. And we ask you to bless and guide all the agencies and those that work to help the poor. And we pray for those people that are struggling with difficult financial circumstances. And we ask for your help for those that are concerned with the uncertainties of this life and dealing with the damaging effects of coronavirus. For those whose income has been terribly affected. We ask that wisdom and justice and compassion guide those who are leading our nation. We ask that they will work for a better world for us all. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that men may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in your love for those that are weak and vulnerable and in the promise of your kingdom of justice. And we ask your blessing on all our NHS staff, our carers and key workers, and those that are working to find new ways of treating the sick and defeating this virus. Lord, we ask also that you give us all the courage to continue to love and care for one another. Give grace to us, to our families and our friends and all our neighbours that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal, O Lord, all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray for all those that are shielding, for those with chronic medical conditions, for those awaiting postponed hospital appointments and procedures, for those who are suffering with depression and stress. And we'll take a few moments to bring before you those that we know and hold in our heart. Lord, give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear us as we remember those that have died in the faith of Christ. 
We pray for all those that mourn their loss. And in according to your promise, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now we share peace together. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another the sign of peace. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put men to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life and so fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one of your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. And so that we, in the company of our Lady, St. Peter, St. Paul, and all the saints, we praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, spare of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us. Joining of faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our soul washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son, sustaining us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share the eternal banquet through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you, and those you love. Amen. Amen. Joy, peace, to love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.